I'm back with a monthly update on Cosmic Desktop, the Rust Edition. Cosmic's February updates bring amazing news as we close in on the alpha, which I'm excited to talk about today. There's definitely been some awesome improvements, so we're going to be checking out some of them from source, as well as reading through and figuring out all that's new, and I'll be talking about some of the community sentiment here in a moment. Let's first start by talking about closing in on a Cosmic Alpha. Cosmic Alpha Countdown. We're on approach towards an alpha version of the new Cosmic Desktop environment for Pop! OS and other distributions. Meanwhile, Cosmic Testing has expanded to more users around the office. This month, we're providing an updates to the checklist we published in January on remaining tasks for releasing the alpha. Screenshots. The screenshot tool has been implemented. Take screenshots of your entire screen, a specific window, or a selected area. So let's check out the screenshot tool here. Basically, like most other tools, if there's multiple windows, for example, window A, window B, and we'll call this window C, you can capture and select a single window. Notice that they have the blue outlines or blue selection, depending on which window and which option you have selected. So currently we have the window mode selected, which is going to take a screenshot of a particular window that you have selected on the screen. You can then hit capture and then choose an option on where to save or what to do with that screenshot after it's been taken. Other options are to select a portion of the screen or take a picture of an entire computer monitor. Definitely standard here and what you would expect of the tool. Let's talk about floating window stacks. This feature is now implemented in Cosmic. Currently stacking allows you to pair tiled windows together across applications like tabs in a web browser. In Cosmic, you'll also have the ability to stack floating non-tiled windows. This can be done by simply dragging a window to the stack header, drag it out of the header to remove it from the stack. Meanwhile, launching an application while a stack is selected will add the application to the stack. I definitely want to try this out to see how well it works. So I'm going to start a terminal up and Firefox in the background as well. Let's open up the settings. Okay, once I have a few windows open, I'm going to enable the tiling support. Here we go. So what do they mean by stacking windows? Let's try to stack a few. So if I go over the top of a window with another window, I can stack them. Notice what's done here. Before I do that, let me actually stack this other one as well. You just drag and drop. And now I have two stacked windows on top of each other. What's nice about this and what's updated seems like that tiled windows can now be stacked together and you can easily go through them by either clicking or actually driving through the motions of the tiling manager itself using some of the shortcut keys. For example, I'm using super left and right arrow and I'm going through the stacked options. This way you can even stack all windows together if you want and very easily go through them by either clicking up top or just using the super arrows. This is a fantastic tool for organization, especially for us who use window tiling managers. And if you're not used to using window tiling managers, you still really have the function of using the mouse, which is why this is so fantastic because you don't have to memorize all those shortcuts. They've made it super easy to use the tiling mode without the shortcuts. Absolutely phenomenal development here. I'm really excited about this stacked window feature. Let me know in the comment section what you think about it, but they've done a pretty great job of showing it off as well with some gaps here. They have a main RS file open with Firefox. And then on the left hand side, they have the cosmic settings and what seems to be a terminal. It looks quite beautiful with the gaps and selection. Let's continue on to talk about cosmic text. A new shape run cache feature was added to cosmic text that enhances the terminal performance. Text shaping determines the position of character based on the adjacent headers, which enables it to use special glyphs where necessary. With this new feature, shaping it, shaping is cached to improve performance and rendering repeated shape operations, resulting in higher frame rates for Cosmic Terminal. So not only is the team focused on designing a new desktop, but as said here, they are significantly improving operations and performance because they are focusing on this desktop at that level. They're tweaking it in order to get us more and better performance out of our systems, which can't be said about all desktop environments, as nowadays we just keep introducing more and more bloat. I do like the emphasis on trying to optimize, even though that they're pre-alpha, meaning we haven't seen an alpha release, but we'll talk about that a little more here towards the end. But let's keep going through. On-screen displays, designs for Cosmic's on-screen displays are complete. These graphical overlays are what you see when you do things like adjust volume, brightness, or turn on airplane mode. And here's what they're talking about by the on-screen display. 
you could imagine while you're using the desktop environment itself, you might be adjusting the volume. For example, when you adjust the volume, you will see the on-screen display overlay instead of no acknowledgement. And it seems to be a great and subtle way of doing this function. So that was the keyboard brightness adjustment. They also have a picture for touchpad on. You notice in the middle, we see a touchpad icon. Here's airplane mode off, airplane logo with a strike through. Maximize animations were added for the top bar and dock that occur when a window is open. Either maximizes or exits a maximize state. So what does that mean? Let's minimize some things here. What they seem to be saying is there's new quality of life improvements as we bring up windows and minimize them and maximize them. One thing I do want to talk about a little bit is an updated dock. I haven't used this in a while and you can see it's currently being hidden. As soon as I go down to the bottom, it comes up and it's very simplistic. It does not cover the entire screen. And I believe you'll have the ability to change this up as you see fit, whether you want it hidden, whether you want it across the entire screen, but either way, they can also be moved around depending on where you want them and or you can pin them aka create favorite or not by right clicking and hitting either unfavorite, which will take it back or moving them around yourself. Right now, all of these are unfavorited. Let's, for example, say I want to favorite my Firefox. It'll go onto a section of its own. Next, display settings, design and implementation is now complete. Adjust display orientation, scale, resolution, and more. The ability to clone displays is planned for after the alpha release. Wallpaper settings, design, and implementation were completed here too. Set wallpapers per display, run them on a slideshow, and more. The final stretch, hybrid graphics. Cosmic works with graphics drivers to provide greater control, predictability, and performance with hybrid graphics. A lot of work has been done to maximize performance on systems that have multiple GPUs. Primarily, performance tests look pro promising, but we're still exploring more ideas to, to take this further. Thanks to improvements in graphics drivers over the years, hybrid graphics mode now has minimal impact on battery life when GPU is not used or not in use. Wayland and the Cosmic Compositor, meanwhile, give us more control over what causes the deep GPU to turn on. When Cosmic users wish to save laptop battery, the battery applet will tell them that the GPU is being used and which apps are using it. Closing these apps or those apps will turn off the GPU. Finally, things that are in progress, and these are the main things that need to get tied up before the team at System76, the developers of Pop! OS, of Pop! OS's Cosmic Desktop, will need to finish before releasing that alpha to us. They do make mention of the alpha. So let's check out Cosmic Terminal. The remaining items for the terminal include custom color schemes, profiles, and splits. The split feature allows you to divide the terminal window vertically into two working areas. This can be customized to use multiple splits as well. Cosmic Edit. Remaining items for Cosmic's text editor include splits, file menu functionality, and spell check. Tiling Applet. The tiling applet has been implemented and includes the option to toggle auto tiling per workspace. Now I do like this a lot. If there are multiple workspaces, say there's multiple ways you like working with your own desktop, you can actually set whether or not each individual workspace as shown here per workspace and what its intended behavior is when creating a new one. Or better yet, what the current workspace's default operation is, either being in the tile mode or non-tile mode. And you can set it by using this toggle over here whenever you're on that specific workspace. A very thoughtful design there. I do like how they've done that. Input device settings. We're wrapping up implementation for keyboard, mouse, and touchpad settings. Cosmic app and applet icons. We took a detour on designing app and applet icons to kick off designs for Cosmic's new file manager. Cosmic files and application for files is now in the works. Designs will be shared later on. Cosmic's file manager, text editor, and terminal serve to test the developer experience in building apps on Cosmic as well as showcase its capabilities. And we've reviewed this one a little bit, Cosmic Files. Here's what it looks like. I'm not going to go through in depth here as I have a different video for that. But just to get a feeling, we have our menu on the left-hand side, which gets us around navigation on the file system. You can actually close this out. And I like the clear distinction of the various different folders located in the home folder. Such things as main RS, which you could open up. If you right click, you can do new file, new folder, select all in properties. Up top, we have file, edit, and view. We can maximize to take up the entire screen. And overall, the theming here is great, elegant, and very nice, at least for me, when it comes to a user experience. I like what they've done here. 
You can also type in your own location if you want. For example, if I wanted to navigate to the desktop, it's pretty easy. Hit enter, boom, I'm at the desktop. Anyways, a simple overview of the file manager or known as Cosmic Files. Then Workspace is a centerpiece to the user experience of Cosmic Desktop Environment. With many important variables to consider, Workspaces remain under construction. Minimize and restore. On Cosmic applications will minimize to a specialized applet that stores and presents all minimized windows as thumbnails. Sort of like what you probably see with Windows. As you hover over things, you can see small thumbnails and what is currently being displayed on that particular window. Login screen. Progress on the new login screen. Cosmic Creator is ongoing. Design matching. In the design matching phase, we'll be touching up features that have already been implemented and making sure that, that they match our designs. The app library, launcher, and notification bubbles are a few implementations that we'll be focused on here. New wallpapers. A new aesthetic calls for new wallpapers. They are still being designed, but rest assured, they're bound to be spacey, starry, and all around cosmic. A 24.04 rebase, the official release of Cosmic Desktop Environment, will debut on Pop OS 24.04 long term support which will be based on Ubuntu 24.04 long-term support. Running and testing on 24.04 gets us closer to a final polished release. Also, if you want to see Carl Richel, the CEO of System76, join him at the Linux Fest Northwest this year while they showcase the Cosmic desktop environment. That's Saturday, April 27th at 11 a.m. Now let's get into talking about some of the community sediment and when we can expect the alpha for Cosmic. As of right now, from what I'm aware, I believe the team is highly focused on trying to get an early April alpha release. All alpha means is that they will have a very crude version of the desktop ready to go for testing purposes. Then we can enter in the beta phase where we start getting rid of bugs. And then finally, a release after all the bugs get squashed and we have all implementations ready and done for the desktop environment. When does a release look like. So as far as I'm aware, the release for both 24.04 Rebase as well as the Cosmic Desktop environment that's built on Rust, the aim here is to shoot for a summer release. Hopefully this is somewhere in midsummer. We'll see as progress gets made, but that is the goal at this moment from my understanding. And finally, we need to talk about community reactions and sediment towards System76's Cosmic Desktop because there is a mix of different emotions at this point. There's curiosity, anticipation, and cautious optimism because if System76 does this right, this could be one of the best desktop environments available to Linux users. So questions that are up in the air from the community are, how reliable is Cosmic going to be? They're wondering about the desktop's performance, which we're yet to see as it's currently under heavy development. Early expectations and experiences of users who've tried Cosmic have also found limited functionality in areas such as the settings app. Will the settings app get improved? We'll see, but mainly users are talking about how Plasma 6's stability in comparison to the settings app will hopefully not be the same with Cosmic. Overall, as far as the developmental phase and progress go, community has definitely seen impressive progress. It's I've been covering this over the months from the team. The System76 team has, has been making amazing progress and working diligently over a remarkable short time period to bring us what seemingly might be one of the best Linux desktop environments. So definitely excitement over that. Concerns about feature completeness are out there, but that's something I've heard expressed multiple times over from different developers of the team that they are planning on a polished experience for users. They're not trying to slap stuff together and they will prolong the release if necessary in order to give us that experience. People are worried about stability issues on release. Now, of course there are gonna be issues, but when you have a comparison against things like GNOME and its stability issues, at least when new versions get released, people are just hoping that it's gonna be a more stable environment in comparison to some of the other desktops. Again, this comes with completeness and that polished mentality, which I think we all understandably respect the team for having that mentality. Which brings me to an interesting take. There seems to be active community feedback and mixed opinions about GNOME and the direction it's taking. A lot of people have actually expressed dissatisfaction with GNOME's direction and the current state of performance, which are two important things to keep desktop users satisfied. And I believe 
the team at System76, the creators of Pop! OS, and the Cosmic Desktop Environment are and have always had a clear direction and have been highly focused on performance. So I hope and believe that we're going to get that directly from Cosmic and we'll all have another wonderful desktop to choose from. That is a blend of many different requirements that the community is insisting on and isn't quite getting from other desktop environments. In summary, as Cosmic is nearing its alpha release, there is a lot of optimism around it and a lot of interest in the developmental progress here. There's a clear desire for a stable, reliable, and modern desktop experience, and hopefully Cosmic will deliver on these fronts. Recognize that the project is still under development and that the team is working diligently to make a polished experience for us. Great work, everyone. I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.